I still haven't planted out the um, leeks or the global onions. I can actually see, I don't believe that it was that long ago. Uh, the seeds were originally sown on the 26th of February, I can see, but uh, they would have really been out, um, ready to go out probably early May. And now there's so many little weed seedlings starting to appear. But uh, with the heat wave and everything, I just left them in their pots. But I have the bed here that's empty. And uh, yeah, I'll get them in now. At least they can settle for that. I have no other plans for this bed uh, for this season. So um, let's get them planted. I think I'll just put the leeks in the middle. And the globos around the edges. Now, I never grown leeks before. I've grown um, onions from the seeds before. Uh, at a, not some amazing success rate, but they've grown. And um, the shallots, I suppose, we see are doing much, much better for us. But there you go. That's oh, the root system. That's the leek. Um, I can't actually remember the variety of them, but I think it's just scandalous how many weed seeds are just growing on top of them. As you can see, it's proper blustery today, but it's still so warm. I'm planting them about four inches apart, I suppose. Yeah. 10 centimeters or so. And with the leeks, also getting rid of the weeds first, but I'm just going to, I made the holes as wide as possible and I'm just going to sit them in. And once I water it, um, the, the hole should be filled then with soil around it. No, Mr. Leek. Yeah. You don't care about leeks, do you? No, not a bit. No, Papa. No. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. I can't. My hands are covered with soil. Oh, a bigger hole. It's a bit bigger hole. Your mama was great at digging holes. Oh, she was. She was my best assistant at digging holes. She was. <laughs> oh, Papa. Love you too. Love you too. Do I need to move something? Ah. That's stuck in my hair. That's stuck in my hair. This is the second metal planter, identical to the one just before. And I would have actually sowed parsnip seeds in here. And I pre-chitted and everything, and they looked nice and strong. And there's only two of them that have come through. So that's a massive disappointment, but um, I might sow a little bit later again. Um, I'll see, I'll see. Uh, might not. It really is a work in progress with um, doing any kind of changes in the garden. So I'll just try to get the remaining globos in here. And I have shallots here um, growing already as well. And I planted them at the same time as I sowed the seeds for the parsnips. Uh, but yeah, very strange how the parsnip now two years in a row they just have not worked for me. 
but we keep learning. And it could be just as, no, parsnips, I do want to uh, grow. Uh, it was the onions, actually, that I was thinking that um, they might not be something I'd continue with uh, just for the amount of what we eat. That if I grow enough for the ones where we just eat the tops, which shallots would provide plenty of, um, I think that would be enough because we don't have that much uh, ground here. Um, which the onions themselves would otherwise take up. I'm just going to have to prioritize what I'm going to grow. Now they are a bit pot bound and I think I should have made the holes a bit wider again. But it's okay. I know it's two weeks ago since you saw me harvesting um, turnips, but um, two weeks has passed, so here I am harvesting more, especially after these rains. There is so many of them, and I just don't want them to go into huge size. Are you a turnip? Are you a turnip, mister? Ooh. Huh? Oh, man. oh, there's loads on the other side. There's just so many of them. But um, that just shows I actually should sow more as well. I should. I should, Baba. Oh, yay, yay, yay. Excuse me. I can't throw the ball for you because you hurt your paws. Yeah, you hurt your leg. So I can't throw it for you. I can roll it for you. Come on, so quietly. Easy, easy. Come on. Come on, come on. Now, so I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And they are a nice size now. These are really nice size. Again, you could go smaller if you do um, raw salads, especially. They'll be so much sweeter. Uh, but these, I'd say when I have a quantity like that, I just, um, I'll, I'll make them into mash. And you see how much I cleared away now. You can really see through it. And I'll show you there, purple sprouting broccoli is actually shooting up already as well. Yeah, you see here? How nice is that? And even from the sides as well. So again, a very easy sign. So more, so you'd have um, something for the winter season as well. But yeah, they're coming. And you see within two weeks, the runner beans have reached the top of the poles as well. And obviously there's flowers um, on lower down branches. There's so much happening. If there's heat, obviously, which there is at the moment. And then obviously a lot of rain. Now you saw me clearing out the chamomile um, earlier from here and it was because that's an annual chamomile, German cam chamomile, and it had done its thing. I've gotten enough of the flower heads off it and the flowers were going over. Now it will self-seed itself like crazy again, I'm sure. And in spring, um, next spring, I'd have to be probably weeding it out a bit because um, even over the last year it, it had uh, spread too far. I didn't want that. And on this side it was actually hiding the um, peat root as well. But 
instead of it then obviously the time now is going to get way more light uh, but most importantly this is actually going to get more air and uh, water as well and I can see a slug already uh, crawling around the place but I just popped the cosmos in here in the meantime obviously them being an annual as well but uh, they can settle now and they will last until the frosts really so I'll have a lovely pop of color here but I'd better go and not forget this slug boy and feed this to the girls So a lovely comment I would have gotten previously about how am I so calm about my pests and diseases and whatnot that are around here. Um, it's very kind to say, but and maybe it's just how I come across that I, I don't show that I'm so stressed about it. But there's maybe just reasons to some of it, as I know that, look, life will go on after some diseases um some pests it's like okay they just showed up this time they're gone the next but there are two things that i'm absolutely petrified about and as a pest it's the wine weevil because i find it so hard to control and it does not it, it, for, for wine weevil it doesn't matter if it's ornamental or um edible it will just do its own thing and it will multiply and uh, there's very little that kills it and the second is blight so i'm totally petrified about blight because our conditions here are uh, very humid and with win um, summers and we obviously we don't have it's because it's a temperate climate so we don't get these extremes really but um, a blight, yeah, in case of potatoes and tomatoes, the rest of them, yeah, again, I don't worry about, but the blight, I'd be definitely petrified. So when these um, charlottes succumb to the disease um, or sort of end of the season sort of for themselves, I didn't stress about it because I know there's harvest in them and um, hopefully it, it wasn't blight, it was just a brown spot um, as it usually is at the end of this season or at, at the end of the time. But for the main crop uh, potatoes, I am a bit worried now because um, the brown spot is traveling there already as swell. So as you see, I've separated them now. I would have otherwise had them in sort of a lineup before and I had one, two, three, four different main crop varieties. And I could start seeing the brown spot or this kind of a just unhappy look on these potatoes first. And I've been just keeping an eye on it. I want to make sure the air gets to go through them because what happened, obviously, we had the really dry month of May and very hot, extremely hot uh, for us here. And it was just such a long spell of it. And the potatoes were fine because I kept them watered um, and because they were together, they didn't suffer. They were actually thriving really well. But in the last now two weeks we've had a very unsettled weather so it's still warm as you see it it is usually up to um, 20s and it's been raining and we've had some unbelievable thunderstorms very heavy um, with flash floods and everything but um that obviously brings about then fungus so i am worried now about the main crop if this would have happened end of july which is like another month away again i I'd, I'd be fine about it i wouldn't stress about it because i know that once i don't let the disease like if they do get affected by blight i don't let the disease go into the tubers or I'll cut off the shows again, all the branches, they'll be gone. Um, I'm, I'm stopping the, 
the disease itself traveling further into the tubers and what I did last year again I stacked the, the pots up under the shelter and they, they were absolutely perfect there was no um, there was no effect from any of diseases uh, from that and even in the greenhouse we got the late blight inside there on the tomatoes uh, but we harvested all them and I got green tomato chutney perfect um, again you you make it work but this is a bit early so if a disease now hits these I might be down on um, on crop so yeah, my biggest um, worry now is to figure out what is actually wrong with them, as some of them are showing the di some kind of a disease um, quicker than others, especially these, and this is Curse Pink, and the more I was reading up about um, this particular variety, it's like, yeah, why did I even bother? Um, there seems to be some kind of fungal thing going on in there as well, so yeah I don't know because I can definitely see little brown lesions on the leaves and I can see why it's not used in um, domestic settings as much because if we're not using any pesticides or herbicides in here so if a disease takes it I'm not treating it with anything so but in a commercial obviously growing they are constantly being sprayed so other there's other varieties that seem better they look better but i'm still worried so i sort of do need them to hold to for another month at least before i'll be um I'll be easy with what's what's happening here and it could just be as well that I will actually if I see that this this is deteriorating more because this is the pot where actually it all started from that's where I noticed that something was not as healthy and happy but it's also a variety I've never grown before uh, Desiree which is up there um, is better looking but the brown spot is on it so Let's wait and see. But there's rain coming now, so I'll show you a tomato update as well. Oh, just got in before the rains really were coming. It's this kind of a funny, misty type of rain, but it's actually still blowing in because the wind is so strong. It's blowing in from the top window. Anyway, look how well the tomatoes are doing now obviously the middle area here the apricot salix is still showing stress and um, the leaves are quite curled up tightly but the bottom ones are uh, relaxing a bit so it could just be that it's due a bit of a feed uh, because the temperatures have started to sort of stabilize better but all the others are good um, only at the very end one of the money makers is also a bit curled looking uh, but others yeah there's tomatoes showing on, on some of them as well so it's looking quite positive and obviously to see the touch of this is just stunning it's really strong and there's so many flowers on it so I'm quite sure it's doing its thing and the basil then in between uh, some are actually nice plants now as well they're not very leggy which is perfect and if I would pinch up the tops more obviously bushier it will get so at the moment yeah they could nearly do um, actually watering again I'll probably do it tomorrow morning because I pushed my whole length of fingers in now and it's um, it's actually dry it's bone dry down there so so tomorrow morning they'll get a good feed and water. So this is the San Marzano and there's plenty of flowers on it and I could just spot actually one of them obviously their shape is very um, oblong and I can see there's two definitely that I have taken. <laughs> I don't know why I'm starting to whisper even about it. It's like I'm going to scare them off or something. 
um, then this is the apricot salix and again actually I can't show you the tomatoes that definitely have taken because I saw them through the glass and from the outside but even from the top here there's one peeping um, but yeah they just need a um, little bit more time because they are big sort of beefy tomato very good for straight away eating and then at the very end is the sweet million the um, uh, cherry tomato and I think I saw some of them yeah there we are so some of them have taken there as well so so far it is all looking oh and um, uh, it's looking positive from that side and then on this side I had two varieties mixed which one was money maker which is the taller uh, not this this is sunflower <laughs> uh, self-seeded um, sunflower a volunteer there but the taller variety is money maker anything that's string uh, st strung up <laughs> But um, then this one, which I'm really excited about, which is called um, a Lucky Leprechaun. And that's an old Irish heritage tomato. And we have tomatoes. So this should be suitable to be grown outside as well. As I said in my early videos, I did not want to take any chances on it. I'll test it here first. And then maybe next year I'll be braver. But then that's the money maker now. So this is the Lucky Leprechaun, but there is Moneymaker. So we have tomatoes coming from that as well. Now I have not fed them this season yet. I was depending on anything that went into the planting holes so far. So we see tomatoes there and there's a couple of tiny ones there as well. Um, and obviously the fresh compost they got. But no, I definitely, I can see that there's so many flowers on them and it's time to start feeding them. And obviously, as I said, um, the soil was dry on the one side of it. Yeah, it's a bit better here, a bit more moist, but um, it can, it could do with more. It could definitely do with more water because now is when they will need it the most. But yeah, this was the little update on the leeks, um, onions and how the potatoes are doing and the tomatoes. So obviously the main thing is now to keep them, keep these watered, fed. And then the hygiene is going to be the main thing, especially any time I do anything around the main crop, the potatoes. And... Um, yeah, let's just hope that the, um, the, the disease won't spread and it won't be as bad. But otherwise, we'll see you next time. Thanks really for watching.